Earlier I said that we were going to be talking about physical development, so let's begin. Here are two important vocabulary terms regarding motor development. Motor development is both cephalocaudal and proximodistal. Cephalo means head, caudal means tail, so motor development occurs head to tail, and it also occurs in a near to far or proximodistal fashion. When we consider motor development after birth, the child is going to be able to lift the head up, move the head around, and this occurs long before the child is able to walk. The next slide shows an even clearer illustration of cephalocaudal development. Here you are looking at changes in body length as a function of age, beginning with a two-month-old fetus. Notice that the head size of this fetus is about half the body length. And then you wait a few months in utero and you see that the head size is about a third of the body's length. And then the newborn child, the head size is about a quarter of the body length. And this type of cephalocaudal head to tail development continues as the individual develops and matures until about 25 years of age when you can see the head size relative to body length is no longer undergoing change for this individual. Let's talk about that term proximodistal or near to far. The near part of your body is the central part where if you imagine drawing a line from the middle top of your head straight down to the floor, near the center of that line, the mid line of your body is proximo or near. And as you move out towards your fingers and toes, it's distal or far. I've never had to describe that without being able to illustrate it with body movements, so I hope that was clear. Essentially, what I'm saying is that motor development occurs in a near to far fashion. You're able to make gross movements of the arms and legs as a child long before you're able to use your fingers, a more distal part of your body, in a precise fashion. In fact, some of you may have children or you babysit or have younger siblings and you can watch them as they learn to pick up objects with their fingers. First, it begins as a kind of scooping motion if you give them a raisin or a bead or something to pick up from the palm of your hand. Their hand forms a, a little scoop and picks up that object. Later on, you can watch the child learn to use the forefinger and the thumb in very precise movements in order to pick up a small object. This illustrates motor development occurring in a near to far or proximodistal fashion. Likewise, if you look at motor development in a child as a series of milestones, it again appears to be both cephalocaudal and proximodistal. But let's look at some of these milestones, and I'm not going to ask you to memorize these. When a child is less than a month of age and lying down, the child can lift its head. At about three months of age, while lying down, the child can not just lift up the head, but also a portion of the chest. At five months of age, typically, a child can sit without support. Later, the child can pull herself or himself up to a standing position. Later on, the child can walk while holding furniture or holding someone's hand. And then the child is able to stand alone and ultimately walk alone. Most children will pass through these milestones in a sequential, predictable fashion. And sometimes parents become a little bit upset or concerned if they believe their child is not hitting these milestones right on time. But we know there are individual differences in when these various milestones are achieved. For instance, if you look at the population of infants in the United States today, they tend to walk at some point between 11 months and 14 months of age. That 12 months is really just an average and there's variation among individuals. Interesting, there are also historical differences in the age at which children learn to walk in the United States. 60, 70 years ago, children tended to walk on average at about 15 months later than they do today. And most scientists will attribute this change to improvements in diet or improvements in socioeconomic status or maybe even genetic inheritance. We can't really know the answer to that question, but it's interesting. Finally, there are cultural differences in the age at which children learn to walk. Last time I checked, the earliest walkers in the world were children from Uganda and they typically walked at about 10 months of age. So clearly psychologists have studied motor development in children and this is very useful information if you are 
examining a child and testing whether or not the child is within the normal amount of variation reaching milestone for motor abilities.